class. Welcome to the remainder of our reciprocal functions. I'm Professor Steele. We are now up to our cosecant function, the final in our reciprocal functions, which is abbreviated by CSC of theta, which happens to be the reciprocal of sine of theta. Recall, we've already looked at our secant of theta, which was the reciprocal of cosine theta. Note, yes, sine does begin with S, but its reciprocal begins with C. And cosine begins with C, and its reciprocal begins with an S. Just note that because it is a common error. Now, let us go back to our cosecant theta function and look at it on Desmos. So, here we have our sine function, and we are now going to reciprocate it. Recall on our sine function, we have a period of 2 pi. We have our maxes occurring at pi over 2, our min occurring at 3 pi over 2. We're taking all these values as we move along the curve and reciprocating our outputs. So, as we move along from 0 to pi over 2, our output values on the sine curve increase, but if we are reciprocating it, the smaller the value, the larger the reciprocal. So as I move along this curve, my output of 0.5 will reciprocate to, yes, if you take one half and reciprocate it, what value should you get? Think about that. My output of 1, if I reciprocate that, what do you get? And so on. So as we graph our reciprocal function, we end up with the following, the green. Again, if you recall, after having watched our cosecant function video, you will note that we still have the same period occurring at 2 pi, repeating itself every 2 pi, and we still have vertical asymptotes. So let's compare it to our secant function that we created earlier. If you notice, our secant function had its minimums occurring at the vertical axis and repeating every 2 pi, whereas our cosecant function has the minimum occurring at pi over 2 and repeating every 2 pi. Let's go back and look at why we have our vertical asymptotes on our reciprocal sine function. So, recall, as before, our sine of theta in our denominator, which would give us a value of 0, becomes our vertical asymptotes. And if we think back to our Desmos visual, when is sine of theta equal to 0? Well, we have our values at 0, pi, 2 pi, and continuing on every period. So we have our vertical asymptotes now occurring at these theta values. Think about that in relation to our secant theta function, which we looked at in a previous video. I hope this has helped. This is the end of our reciprocal function series. Thank you for watching. Please click on the Advantage logo to like and subscribe.